So let's start to explore to create a custom plugin. In this case, it's a basic plugin, but how we can connect the plugin and make it look professional for Chart.js. So let's create a custom plugin in Chart.js 4. So first thing first, you need to have the boiler template. You can find the boiler template on this specific link here, chartjs3.com getting started. When you scroll down, you can find all this code here below. Copy that code and then you have this. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a separate file, which is our Chart.js plugin. And that plugin will eventually be connected here. So how we do this? Well, let's start to work with the file. First of all, I'm going to say a constant and we'll make it something very, very basic. So it's a custom background color plugin. And I'm going to say equal, and then I'm going to give you an ID. And this ID will be very important later on. I'm going to give it the name custom background color. I will exclude the plugin from the name, but you can put it in there. It's up to you. Then what I want to do is I want to select when we would like to draw this one. Well, in this case, I'll say here before anything else, I want to draw this magical border or, or just basic border. And then I'm going to say here column. And then here we're going to say here the chart, the arcs, and the plugins. And then in here, callback functionality. Once we have this, I want to do here constant and do an object destructuring. If you are not familiar with object destructuring, I have a video about that in the description box. Understanding charges, object destructuring. So I'm going to use a CTX chart area. And then I'm going to say here. And if you don't know chart area, video as well in the description box about chart area. Top, bottom, and then we have the left, right, width, and height. So once we did this, what I want to do next is I want to create a very simple item. So I'm going to say ctx.save. First of all, to save the old variables. And then I'm going to say here, ctx.stroke style and for the stroke style i'm going to get a default color here i take one of these colors here and i guess this reddish border color is sufficient in my case so once i did this i'm going to say ctx dot uh, uh what is that the rec stroke rec, rec stroke or stroke rec stroke rec and then we're going to say here the x value, the y value, the width, and the height. Good thing here is we already have all of these variables. So the width and height are already here. We can just put that in there. And then we're going to get here the x, that is the left. And we have here the top, that is the y value. So the moment we do this, what I want to do as well is ctx dot save, uh, not save, restore. Restore and reset the variables. Save that, refresh. Now, of course, it doesn't work yet. And the reason why it doesn't work, we didn't connect it yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this link file here because that's the one. Copy that, put it in here, and then just paste that in there. But then what I need to do is I need to get here, of course, the JavaScript code. Just copy this part, put it in here. So I'm putting it in here because I want to make sure that the charges library loads before anything else. Why? This charges plugin is dependent on that. So once I save this, refresh, nothing happens. The reason why is we have only loaded it, but we didn't activate or register it so the charges says, oh, I see this plugin. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure that charges sees the plugin. I'm going to type in here chart dot. And then we're going to say here register. And then we're going to get the register name. How do you find that? Well, that's this specific object here I'm going to copy that put that in here if I save this refresh you can see here now we have this item working so now we have this and what I want to show you this is very important if I go in here and this is the reason why the ID becomes or later on the ID, ID will be very important but even if you skip it now you get an error so if I remove this if I refresh you can see here now the class does not have an ID this is the ID they're referring to this ID becomes very important for us because with that we can create here in the options another option here or basically plugins and then have advanced options like many advanced plugins that you've used in chart.js so that's what we're going to do now so what i want to do is i want to put it in here and make sure that this is the id name and not the plugin constant variable so it must be the id very important 
So once we do this, what I want to do here is, for example, and I'm going to use just a basic example, is this here, I would like to have this as default color, but I want to give you or anyone who uses this plugin the option to change the color. So how do we do this? We're going to say here, color, or maybe line color, border color, whatever you want. And then we're going to say here, let's make this blue. So if it's filled up with blue, I want to change this to blue. So how do we do that? In here, I'm going to cut out this. I'm going to say here, plugins dot color. And why color? Because in the plugins, we have the color here. If this would be not a name, border color, then we have to make sure that we align that with the border color. So if I save this right now, refresh, you can see it becomes blue. But of course, not done yet, because I want to make here then a, uh, a or statement, a logical statement, where it's either the color, if there is a color, or else this color here. This works with string, but if it's a number, you have zero or no value, you get some tricky part. So you have to do it differently. So as you can see here, we have now blue. And now if I say, oh, we don't have anything at all, save that. Refresh, you can see here now, it becomes the red color, our default value. And this is just the basics of it. There's so much more you could do, but that's it for now.